welcome back we all these classes we have seen the importance of all nutrients like carbohydrates proteins fats minerals and vitamins now the next important nutrient in the body is water so it comprises 50 to 70% of the total body weight and muscles also contain a lot of water about 73% and fat contains 20% in the body not outside and intracellular fluid is the fluid within the cells which uh, comprises of 2/3 of the total body water and extracellular fluid is outside the cells that is like in blood and lymph it is composed of 1/3 of the total body water and this water is an essential nutrient without which death occurs and therefore we cannot live without food without vitamins and minerals and without water all these are very important for life now functions of water it is a universal solvent the water dissolves all the nutrients in it in and uh, carries it to various cells through the blood and it dissolves the waste products and helps to eliminate them from the body through the feces through perspiration through urine and other ways then urea if the urea remains in the body uh, there is a chance of becoming uremic that means the blood is having urea and it becomes toxic therefore urea also is uh, dissolved in water and it is eliminated from the body so that the body homeostasis is maintained and carbon dioxide which is a waste product of the metabolism is has to be eliminated therefore this carbon dioxide is dissolved in blood and eliminated through respiration therefore when the carbon dioxide remains in the body the ph of the blood becomes more and more acidic and causes problem then they remove the waste products like sodium ex whenever there is excess of sodium there is the water removes them by get, getting the urination more number of times and the excess amount of urine is excreted then normally there is 1 to 1.5 liters per day of urine is excreted through which all the waste products are excreted from the body and the homeostasis is maintained then it avoids concentrated urine so the urine is always diluted and excreted so when you the urine is concentrated then there is a chance of getting the uh, kidney stones in the kidneys therefore whenever water is dissolves all the waste material and excretes it there is no chance of having kidney stones and the kidneys are healthy now body temperature regulation also is carried out by water so all the metabolism in the body generates a lot of heat so the water that is present in the body it absorbs the excess heat and maintains the body temperature and it secretes fluid via perspiration so that and the skin is the because of the perspiration skin becomes cool and as the perspiration evaporates the temperature is maintained and it is a lubricant for joints and synovial fluid the fluid that is present in the joints and it is a shock absorber see when the mother is pregnant there is amniotic fluid in the placenta so that because of this amniotic fluid the baby is not directly hurt so it protects the baby against uh, any injuries then cerebrospinal fluid also helps us to protect our brain and spinal cord now there are what daily water losses is through urine this is the excess i mean the largest amount of uh, water loss is through urine then the second is the skin and lungs is through the water vapor when we exhale you feel the your um, air that is warm with water vapor and some amount of water is lost through feces the sources of water when we say water it is not pure water which gives us fluid in the body so all the fluids like water and other beverages are supplying water to the body then the fresh fruits and vegetables meat and except all the dried grains and foods you have water in all the other foods and you get water from metabolism so whenever there is a metabolism of carbohydrate fats and proteins 
the end product is water and energy nutrients like carbon dioxide energy and water. The factors affecting the water balance and its maintenance, the ability of the body to adjust fluids and electrolytes and acid base balance, these are influenced by age. So, as the age increases, the ability to adjust fluids will decrease and when it is an infant stage, the, the body is very small and the amount of water is less. So, the uh, excess uh, urine is excreted, the large amount of urine is excreted and the body has to maintain that is why the infant has the milk as uh, the main diet where 90 percent of it is water. Then gender and body size and environmental temperature and lifestyle. So, infants immature kidneys are less able to conserve water than, so they lose more fluids. Whereas, in adults because of higher metabolic rate, it increases the fluid loss and when it comes to elderly people, the aging increases the risk of dehydration. There is metabolism and loss of water is there, therefore, dehydration occurs. And women have the uh, proportionately more amount of uh, body fat and less water compared to men. Environmental temperature there are fluid losses through sweating and the perspiration is increased in hot weather and the body attempts to uh, dissipate heat. Whenever there is lot of uh, perspiration, the body temperature becomes cool and lifestyle and other factors like diet, exercise, stress affect the fluid, electrolyte and acid balance. Now, dehydration it is uh, the deficit of total body water with whenever there is disruption in the metabolic process, there is uh, reduction in the body water which is called as dehydration. So, this is also a re reason for hypernatremia, hypernatremia is increased sodium content in the body. So, whenever there is increased sodium content, it attracts water and try to excretes from the body, therefore, dehydration may occur. And the term dehydration must be distinguished between hypovolemia that is Hypovolemia is there is loss of the blood volume, particularly the plasma. So, when there is loss of blood volume, it does not uh, refer to as dehydration, but when the total body uh, water reduces, then we can call it as dehydration. Then, most of the people can tolerate 3 to 4 percent decrease in the total body water without any difficulty. So, we can stay for a cert certain time, even though we are thirsty, we can wait for some time. Then sometimes when it increases to 5 to 8 percent, it causes fatigue and dizziness and over 10 percent it can cause physical and mental deterioration and accompanied by severe thirst. And dehydration occurs when free water loss exceeds free water that is there is no balance intake and output and usually it happens when there is heavy exercise, there is lot of dehydration and any disease condition. When there is fever also, there is lot of excess of uh, heat along with water, thereby there is dehydration. And a decrease of more than 15 to 25 percent of water is fatal. At this stage, the person, uh, the death is sure. Then mild dehydration is characterized by thirst. Whenever the body uh, reduces the water content, the brain gives us a signal to take water by creating thirst and general discomfort. So, this resolves when you take normal water through the mouth. Now, excess of water also is dangerous. So, some people keep on drinking water more and more water. So, it can get intoxicated. So, water intoxication is also known as water poisoning or dilutional hyponatremia. So, this is potentially dangerous and uh, death can occur because the brain functions uh, lose its normal balance and uh, electrolytes are disturbed in the body and the uh, since it is a hyponatremia, the sodium quantity becomes very less in the body compared to the water content, thereby it affects the brain. and there is pushed outside safe limit of 
over hydration. So, you can see how the edema occurs, this is a normal foot and when there is over hydration, when he, the person consumes more and more of uh, fluids, there is so much of edema. Although water is essential for life, uh, if a person drinks too much, the blood becomes dangerously diluted by um, and the salts that are to be present in normal levels are decreased too much. So, according to the American scientists, it is this condition is called as hyponatremia, so, which leads to water intoxication. So, some of the symptoms are you get headache, fatigue, nausea, vomiting, frequent urination because the body has to lose the excess water. So, there is frequent urine, urination and mental disorientation because the sodium level in the blood decreases. So, when a person drinks too much of water, the kidneys are overloaded with work. So, they cannot flush it out as well and cause excess water to enter into the cells. So, this causes all the uh, cells to swell and cause edema. So, similar thing happens to the brain cells and the when the brain cells start swelling and uh, getting hydrated, this condition is fatal. And water just like any other substance can be considered as a poison. Water is an essential nutrient and it can also become a poison when it is over consumed over a specific period of time. So, more than 6 liters of water, if it is consumed for a long period, then the body starts getting water intoxicated. So, whenever the body gets water intoxicated, the nutrients that are present in the blood and the other substances get diluted and the body gets disoriented. So, even healthy people can get water intoxication. So, this is the importance of water and how it is important to take sufficient amount of water, what happens in dehydration and how important it is to maintain the um, uh, fluid balance, acid base balance and water balance and what happens if we take excess amount of water. So, that uh, we feel if we take excess amount of water, we are healthy, but it gets intoxicated. Thank you.